Today I'm going to show you how to overclock your INEO devices. This can damage your handheld depending on how far you push it and it's totally up to you. I'm not responsible for any damages that you sustain on your handhelds and INEO will likely void your warranty by doing this. Regardless if you're interested in doing this on your device, let me show you how to get this done. This is going to work on any INEO device that you have and it also works on ISpace 2.0. By default, the INEO Air that I have here will only run up to 15 watts. However, I've turned up the TDP limit to 20. With CPU-Z up here, you can see that the TDP is being reported at 15 watts. But if you look in hardware info and you scroll down to the package power, you can see that the maximum TDP is just over 18 watts. I have it set to 18 watts in IS space, so this is showing up correctly. As mentioned, I just want to iterate that this is totally up to you and doing this will probably void your warranty and it could wreck your handheld but if you're careful with it i think it's probably safe enough however i'm not responsible for any damages that you sustain on your handheld if you still want to boost your tdp a couple more watts let me show you how to get it done without further ado this is how to overclock your ionio devices <laughs> The first thing that you need to do is to head over to IS Space and get your correct TDP configuration set up. On my unit here, I was running 15 watts maximum for the AAA mode. Normal game mode here was set to 13 watts and retro gaming was set to 6. This is the mode here that we're going to be changing. The normal game and retro are staying the same. For AAA, you always want to make sure that you have the CPU turbo enabled and set the power policy to high. Once you've got your TDP configurations configured, you want to go down to your fan control and make sure that you either enable custom like I have here or you can do a balanced or max. Balanced is probably fine but I've gone ahead and made a custom configuration. I definitely wouldn't use mute though as it's going to get a little hot. If you're interested about my custom fan curve I have the fan set to 30% at 40 degrees, 40% at 55, 50% at 60, 75% at 70, and 100% at 80. Once you have that set, make sure to hit the start button to save the changes. We've set up our TDP modes and we've also done a custom fan configuration. The next thing we have to do is to get IS space to recognize 20 watts. However, first we're going to go to the BIOS and change the TDP. If you want to get to the BIOS directly from Windows, just go ahead and click on the start button, then click on your settings. In your settings, look down at the bottom here for recovery, then just click on the advanced startup and just go restart now. The device is currently in a portrait mode so it's going to look a little weird on my capture card here as it's trying to flip it around but it can't really apply the rotational data correctly. Regardless, once you're in this menu, go to the troubleshoot, then go to advanced options, then scroll down until you see the UEFI firmware settings. This is going to boot us into our BIOS. Select restart. Now that we're in the BIOS, just be extra careful with what you're switching here. First thing that we need to do is to head over to the advanced tab, then click on the power and performance. In the power and performance menu, we're going to be swapping the power management control on the CPU. Go ahead and enter on there. We're going to scroll down until we see config TDP configurations. Make sure that you don't touch anything at the top here, but the power limit one is going to be set to what you want your TDP set to. A lot of these BIOSes I believe are locked, but on the i3 Air Plus, you can change these settings. I personally wouldn't recommend going over 20 watts on the i3 version but I've seen a couple people go over that. I've gone ahead here and swapped the power limit 1 which was 0 before to 20,000 which is 20 watts. Don't touch any of these other settings here we're only swapping the first one. With all that set just to save your settings press escape then escape again escape then go over to save and exit then save changes and exit. Save your configuration yes. Once you boot it back into windows it will still 
they'll show the TDP limit at 15 watts. To get that set over 15 watts, you're going to have to go ahead and change something in the configuration file for IS space directly. To change the configuration file in IS space, let me show you how to do that next. In your file manager here, go to your C drive, then go to your program files, then open up the IS space folder. And the file that we're looking for is called config. Before we edit this config file here, the first thing that we need to do is to back it up just in case we lose our original configuration or if something happens and we need to get that back. Right click on it, go copy, then make a new folder in here called backup and paste that in there. By default, we might not be able to edit this file here since we don't have permissions. Right click on the file, go to properties, go to the security tab and click edit. In here, scroll down until you see your user account, then under full control, check that off. Once we check that off, hit apply, then go OK and hit OK again. Now we should be able to edit this config file. Right click on the config file, go open with notepad. In notepad we have to scroll down until we see the model that we're using. This is the i3-1215U version. So this is the one I'm going to be editing here. Don't touch any of this stuff here at the top, but at the very bottom you're going to see power level. This is the minimum and the maximum allowed values. Change the maximum to the wattage that we set in the BIOS. I've gone ahead and already swapped this to 20 watts. Once that's done, go file, save as. It'll automatically save it as a text file, but we need to go down to all files. This config file is an XML file, so go config.xml, then go save. Once you've typed that in, it'll ask you if you want to override the other file. Because we've already backed that up, just go ahead and say yes. I'm going to hit cancel because I've already done this. Now that we've changed the config file, we can also close out of this window here. To get IS space to correctly show the new TDPs, we have to exit IS space then boot it back up. With IS space rebooted, you should be able to see now that your TDP limit was at 15, but now it's up to 20 watts. Persona 5 Royal had some performance issues before, but it definitely doesn't now. With its set to 18 watt TDP, it's pretty dang smooth. Unfortunately, for some reason, the i3 won't show the FPS, but you can see there that the CPU load is sitting at about 55%. The GPU load is also idling at around 70. This is all with the resolution set to 720p, borderless. The graphic options are set with the rendering scale to 100% and everything else low. Anti-aliasing is also on FXAA. It's nice to see this game finally running on this device. We also have a little extra GPU headroom and that's really good to see. There's a couple other games that didn't work well so let me show you the difference on those. The new Armored Core Fires of Rubicon was one that I definitely wanted to get working but unfortunately the RAM is the limitation here. Unfortunately with only 8 gigs of RAM and 300 megabytes being used for system usage it's definitely not enough to get it to run. The game starts fine though but keep your eye on the RAM usage. As soon as we load the game up here watch the RAM usage. The RAM usage starts filling up and by the time the game loads there's no resources left and it just freezes and crashes. Anyways there's a couple other games so let's hop to the next title. Next up is Control. I've gone ahead and set the rendering resolution to 720p. I have vSync on and everything else is set to the absolute lowest setting possible. With those set on we're getting around 30 FPS. It's not bad but I personally don't think it's playable because the dips are way lower. If we up the TDP to 18 watts, we can see the FPS hover around 36 to 38 FPS. It's not a huge improvement, but it's definitely noticeable. FromSoft's masterpiece from last year, Elden Ring, is up next. We have it set to 720p here with the lowest graphical options possible. Let's lower the anti-aliasing to off as well. Everything is the lowest can possibly go. We're getting about 27 to 28 FPS. That's not playable in my opinion. At about 27 to 30 FPS. I really don't think this game's playable on here. Let's bump the TDP up to 18 watts. That brings it up to about 31, 29 to 31 FPS. That's a shame to see, but honestly, I had no hopes for this game running on here. That's still not really much of an improvement. Let's swap to the next title. In Skyrim at 720p, lowest settings, we're getting around 50 to 55 FPS. It's not too bad, and it's definitely playable. Bumping up to 18 watt TDP, we're sitting anywhere from 53 to 57 FPS. This game didn't really notice much of an improvement, but to be honest, it was playable at 15 watts. I tried to get Horizon Zero Dawn to run, but it kept crashing on me. That's unfortunate, but we just don't meet the system requirements.
requirements to play this game. In Sonic Frontiers, I've gone ahead and set the graphics quality to the lowest. Rendering resolution is set to 100% at 720p, and we're getting around 20 FPS. It also feels really sluggish too, I don't think this is playable. Bumping it up to 18 watts, we're only getting about 21 to 22 FPS, so there's little to no improvement here. Even if we push it all the way to 20 watts, we're only seeing about 22 to 23 FPS. It's a shame, but this game just definitely doesn't run on this device. Octopath Traveler 2 was the last game that I want to try, but for this one we had to bump it up to 1080p. I have the texture settings set to low, with all the options set to medium. In town here, I'm getting around 25 to 30 FPS. CPU load isn't capping out, and it's definitely GPU bound here. If we go up to 18 watts, we're sitting at around 28 FPS. That's a little bit better, but still not quite that 60 FPS we're aiming for. We can easily hit that though, running at 720p. In 720p, we can go all the way to high settings at 15 watts and get about 43 to 45 FPS. If we go all the way to 20 watts, we can get a decently impressive 48 to 50 FPS. Of course, we can easily max this to 60 if we drop some of the settings. The last thing that I wanted to check here was to see if there was any CPU improvement. I'm going to run a quick benchmark here on CPU-Z at 15 watts and we're going to go from there. I opened up Hardware Info 64 so we can see what's going on on the processor. Keep an eye on the core clocks here. We're going to watch the current one and the maximum core clock. I'm going to reset this after every test so we know what the minimums and maximums are. Let's do a quick test here with the CPU set to 15 watts. With the 15 watt test done, the current core clocks here were at around 3.1 gigahertz average with the max at 4.3. We got an impressive score on single thread of 522 with a multi-threaded performance clocked in at 1880. Let's go ahead and move this up to 18 watts to see what the improvements are like. At 18 watts, we got a multi-threaded score of 2169 and a single threaded score of 584. Single threaded score is pretty impressive. Just for the fun of it, I also tried 20 watts and we got an impressive score of 2324 for our multi-thread and over 600 on our single thread score. That's incredible for a handheld. One of the interesting things that I noticed even running this at 20 watts was we are not being thermal throttled at all. We're hitting our power limit, yeah, but we're capping it out at 20 watts. There is no thermal throttling going on. This is definitely not something that I would recommend to everyone, but the cooling performance is there, and if you're careful, I think you can go up to 20 watts relatively safely. Of course, do this at your own risk, and just know that iNeo might void your warranty by doing so. What do you guys think? Are you interested in overclocking your iNeo Air Plus or your other iNeo devices if the BIOSes are unlocked? Let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions, make sure to let me know in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, and as always, thanks for watching.